Hi everyone and welcome to our film on the research cycle. Today it's actually all about planning ahead. Not planning ahead means you don't know where you're going. And not knowing where you're going means you're going nowhere fast. Applied research is more or less like solving a mysterious whodunit murder. You have to investigate the crime scene, you have to find out everything there is to know about your victim, you have to plan the ways in which you are going to question your suspects. You also have to ask around about motives and alibis. You have to listen carefully to what people are saying and what they are not saying. And then you can find loopholes in the answers, make connections, tie everything together, and then you will have the one suspect with a motive and without an alibi. Let's say the butler in the kitchen with a lead pipe. Afterwards, you can tell others that you have solved the mysterious whodunit murder. Because you are the detective. Research is often referred to as a cycle. Like the wheels of a bicycle, your research cycle will go around and around and will repeat several steps of it. With each repetition, you will actually be getting closer to your aim. Your aim is to solve a problem, a problem based on evidence. And this evidence you as a researcher will have uncovered. This is one of the main ideas of the research cycle and that is why we call it an iterative process. The idea of the research cycle was put forward by Jamie McKenzie in 1995 and he was saying well begun is half done and this emphasizes the crucial importance of thinking about the question that you want to answer first. And let's look at McKenzie's cycle. It had five phases. The first one is the conception phase. What is the question that you are trying to answer? The who done it question. If you think about our mysterious murder, you have to find all the information about your victim. The second phase is the elaboration of the research plan. What is the right way to go about and answer your research question? Make a list of suspects. The third phase is the empiric phase. So you are actually out there asking the questions, asking your suspects one by one. Then you come to the analytic phase in which you bring all the answers together and you connect them systematically until you have uncovered the evidence. So you now know I have all the information, but what does it mean? How does it tie up? Finally, you have the dissemination phase in which you present your results to others in the most appropriate way. So you have solved your murder, now you can tell everyone who done it. But why is it called a cycle? Well, sometimes you might uncover something more or less at the end of the cycle and that makes you want to re-question, rethink and re-answer something that you have done previously. We will now go through all of these phases one by one and clarify what it is you should do in each one of them. You can use this information as a roadmap as you go along conducting your project. Let's start by the conception phase. At the end of the conception phase, you should have a research question. Actually, a good, solid research question. And a good research question is one that is grounded. It is grounded in the theory and it is grounded in the results already uncovered by others. So knowing what others have done is actually the first thing to do. Reviewing the literature on our topic is very important. You can watch more information on this on the film about the literature review. After the reviewing the literature, you should have the most important theories, the main authors, the current trends and the most important information covered by others. Your research questions should build on all this information so it can create new knowledge. You now have all the information you need to formulate your own research problem. A research problem is a problem you are trying to solve. Once you know what your research problem is, it is then time to formulate your research question. What do you need to know in order to solve the problem that cannot be found in the literature that you have reviewed? This is the big question, the one that you are trying to answer, the who done it question. 
you can formulate then your overarching research aim. What do you want to achieve in doing the research? Why are you going to do it in the first place? You are now ready to plan the ways in which you can answer your research question. So what is the right way to go about and answer your research question? You should first choose a broad methodological approach fitting a specific research paradigm. And you will find more information on this in the video on research paradigms. Very broadly, you can choose between one of three approaches. A quantitative approach, like a survey or conducting experiments and then analyzing your data using statistics. Or a qualitative approach, like interviewing your subjects, making observations and analyzing oral or written material. But you can also choose a combination of the two. And you will find more information on this in the video on mixed methods design. After you have chosen a broad approach, you need to make new choices again. How exactly are you going to get the answers to your questions? You need methods. When choosing a method, you should also think about the method that you are going to use to analyze your data. Because the way you're going to analyze your data also determines the way you're going to collect it. If you don't do this, you might end up in a swamp of data and you have no idea of what to do with it. So now that you know what you're going to ask and how you're going to ask, you of course need to decide whom you're going to ask. So you need a so-called sample. So a sample is a group of people that is taken from a larger group of people and represents this larger group of people that you are going to question. The sample gives you some information that you need to really answer appropriately your research question. But of course, choose well, because if you don't, you will have all this data that you can't do anything uh, with. So are you serving all employees of a given company or just a few of them? Are you observing how women in top position participate in board meetings or is it the men? What you need is a sampling strategy. Take random sampling, for example. Here you choose entirely by chance. So everybody has the same probability of being chosen at any stage of the sampling process. Or you choose purposive sampling strategies. And this means that you choose based on your judgment as a researcher about the amount of knowledge that certain people can provide you in answering your research question. But remember, you have to motivate your choice all the time. This will be needed for your research report. Now, you need to make new choices. What instruments are you going to use? Here, you can use instruments that have been developed by others, for example, surveys, and there's a lot of them out there, and you have come across them, certainly, when you have reviewed the literature. But on the other hand, you can also choose to develop your own instruments. Or you can use a combination of the two, bits and pieces of surveys, and also your own part of the survey that you will adjust to your own particular research question. But either one, you always have to figure out a way to test it first. This is called a pilot. You need to gather a small amount of people, apply your developed instruments, and ask them for suggestions for improvement. Once you have done that, you are ready to go out there and actually start collecting your data start questioning your suspects. We are now at the empiric phase, and empiric means based on experience, and it is your experience as a researcher that we are talking about. But remember in this phase that you should inform participants about the research goals that you are pursuing. There is a lot of ethical issues in research that need to be addressed beforehand, because many times you are asking kind of personal questions to your participants, so they must give you consent first. Another thing in the empiric phase is to remember to keep a systematic record of the data that you have collected, where and when. It does help you to process data quickly. For example, if you're conducting a survey, you might develop your own data sheet, enter the dates and label your variables as you go along. But if you are collecting qualitative data, like in an interview, it also helps you to transcribe the recordings as soon as you finish them. You can now start analyzing your data and start making the connections you need. We have come to the analytic phase, and the magic word in this phase is again systematic. You have 
hopefully chosen the methods that you are going to use to analyze your data when you are selecting your methodological approach. So you know how you're going to systematically analyze your data. And nowadays there is a lot of available software out there to help you analyze your data. Your analysis should also be made in several steps. You should first describe each key result pertaining to each one of the questions. You may choose to use visualization techniques in this phase like a table or a scheme or a graph. Afterwards, you should interpret your data. Data interpretation means grouping the answers together that pertain to one topic or one visualization technique, but of course it also means linking each interpretation to the theory and to the results that you have introduced before in your literature review. Once this is done, you are almost at the end of the research cycle and if you are still alive, you have probably solved the mysterious murder based on the evidence that you have uncovered as a researcher. But you still need to tell the others and this is called dissemination. Originally, it meant scattering the seeds around and that's what you are going to do. You are going to scatter the seeds of your new found knowledge around. Traditionally, you will be asked to write a written report, like a research paper or a thesis. But more and more dissemination also means visualization. So you might be told to do a presentation or a poster. Your audience will actually determine the way you disseminate your knowledge. So you should check the wishes of your client and read the guidelines of your institution before you start writing. In this film, we have sketched all the phases of the research cycle in broad strokes. But of course, the devil is in detail, so you should check for more information in all of the other films about the research process.